Hello everybody and welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. In our series of chatting with NPCs, where I took a year to conversate with each NPC once per day, I talked to Farmer Ben here. Now Farmer Ben seems to be mostly designed to give helpful advice related to farming. So he's got a lot of information to say about crops and how to work the land. To that end, I've split this video up into two segments just for the sake of length. So the first segment, we're going to do a video on what Farmer Ben has to say about crops. And then in part two, we're going to have another video as to what Farmer Ben has to say about working the soil. Look who we have here. Last time I saw you, you were playing in cow dung. Remember me? I'm Ben. Some call me by my nickname, Helper B. Tell me more about you. You know, I've been helping your old grandpa for well over three decades now. Walter hired me as a helper some 35 years ago. I was still fresh. And couldn't drive a plow straight around the corner of an odd-shaped field. He showed me everything back then. It didn't take long before your grandparents couldn't live without me. He and his wife welcomed me to the family, and I became part of the farm. Did I want to run my own farm when I was young? Yes, I did. But that never happened. Doesn't matter, though. In a way, you could say I got stuck here. But I tell you what, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. I don't have to travel the world and reinvent myself all the time. That just sounds exhausting. I get what you're saying. I'm the same. I like you already. And you know, Walter has been a great boss and mentor to me. But let's get back to the present. I'm happy that you're here and taking over the farm. The last few months have been a challenge. I tell you that. Walter is getting older. He's tired. It had deep wrinkles on his forehead before you arrived, even deeper than usual. And I'm not getting younger either. I avoid movement at all costs to protect my joints. However, since it was set in stone that you'd take over, his mood instantly turned around. Tell me, are you nervous about taking over? Be honest, yes. Don't be. You don't have to do it alone. There are people here who will help you. I remember my first day at the farm. I felt like a newborn calf, stumbling around aimlessly. But don't worry, we'll get you up to speed. This place may seem big and intimidating at first, but that's normal. Where do we start? Well, since your grandfather slowed down, he didn't really bother with the latest machines and did a lot of stuff, well, in an old school kind of way. That's probably why he sent you to me. I'm an avid reader of all those agricultural magazines, you know? Old, but still learning. However, if you need advice on livestock or forestry, you should talk to Katie and Noah, the local animal farmer and lumberjack. If you come to me, I can help you make sure everything grows well in the fields. As your grandpa always says, a watched crop never fails. Except if a twister hits, it happens. Whenever you need me, kid. See ya. Need advice? Just ask me. I need help with crops. Can you tell me more about grains? Which crop are grains? Wheat, sorghum, barley, oat, Canola and long grain rice are classified as grains. Soybeans are technically not grains, but they are handled with the same machinery. The good thing is you can use the same combine harvester with a grain header for all of those. What equipment do I need for grains? Okay, here's the list of machines you need for grains. Get a cultivator to prepare your field. If the field requires plowing, you need a plow or a subsoiler, which is a faster, 
and cheaper alternative to a plow. You need a seeder and seeds. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a weeder. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. You need a combine harvester with a grain header to harvest. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. Some newbies always forget to empty their trailers. That's it. It's child's play, really. Now go play. Give me step-by-step -step instructions, please. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is cultivating. Get to the field, lower the cultivator into the ground, and go. It's usually enough to cultivate instead of plowing. Step three is sowing the crop. Attach the cedar to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the sower, and turn it on. Now you sow the grain, one row at a time. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step five is weeding using a mechanical weeder. Get rid of weeds when they appear on the field. If they grow further, you need a hoe or field sprayer, but try to avoid that. Step six is harvesting. Hop into your combine harvester, attach the grain header, and start harvesting by lowering the header and turning it on. When you are done, Unload the harvest into a trailer by extending the pipe of the combine harvester. When it's positioned over a trailer, it unloads automatically. Store it, sell it, or process it at production sites. And that's basically it. Tell me more about grapes and olives. What do I need for grapes and olives? First, you need an open space. Not necessarily a flat field like you usually use for your other crops, but what about a nice meadow on the hill? Both are not like most of the other crops. As you plant your vines or olive trees very close to each other, you need a narrow tractor. That's why you need a narrow subsoiler to loosen the soil between your grape vines or olive trees. You should keep the spaces between the vines clear. Use a mulcher to make it look nice and tidy. Normally, you'd use a cedar and seeds. Well, not this time. You buy vines and trees in the construction section of the dealership and place them on your land. A special fertilizer spreader and liquid fertilizer is vital to increase the yield. Now, it gets more interesting. You need a special grape or olive harvester to harvest. For grapes, also get a leaf cutter to prepare the vines after harvesting so they can grow again next season. Don't forget to have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. Give me step-by-step -step instructions, please. Check the crop calendar and the appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting first. Step one, place the vines or trees one row after another. Keep the rows as close as possible, but keep in mind that you need a narrow tractor. Step two, since we want to keep the spaces in between the rows clear, use the mulcher as soon as grass begins to grow higher. Step three, since the rows are close together, we'll use a slim subsoiler for this task. We're cultivating between the rows to loosen the soil for more water and nutrients. Step four, apply fertilizer to increase the yield. You know how, right? Step five, when it's time to harvest, position the harvester centered in front of the first row and drive straight. Step six, 
This is for grapes only. You need to cut the leaves to prepare the vines for next year. Then you're done. Tell me more about potatoes. What equipment do I need for potatoes? Growing potatoes is a lot of fun, but you need special equipment. If the field requires plowing, you need a plow or a subsoiler, which is a faster and cheaper alternative to a plow. A planter and seeds would be good too. So far, so obvious, right? Only this time, the seeds can be actual potatoes. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a hoe. It will remove weeds between crops growing in rows. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. Decide whether to invest in an expensive, self-propelled vegetable harvester or a combination of a home topper and pulled harvester. If you use a home topper and a harvester as separate implements, your tractor would have to be strong enough to attach both at the same time, front and rear. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. I think that's it. Is it just me, or are you in the mood for some baked potatoes? Give me step-by-step -step instructions, please. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is plowing. You need to plow if you have grown this crop on this particular field before. Because of the roots, you can use a subsoiler instead of a plow. It's faster. Step three is planting the crop. Get your potato planter and plant them in rows until the entire field is covered. Use potatoes from previous harvests or buy new seeds from the store. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step five is weeding using a hoe. Take care of your plants and get rid of weeds as soon as possible. Use a hoe or a herbicide sprayer. Use the latter only if the weeds are already too tall. Step six is harvesting. Harvesting potatoes is for young people like you. However, I'll help you where I can, but you have to do the field work. Can you tell me more about sugar beets? What equipment do I need for sugar beets? If the field requires plowing, you need a plow or a subsoiler, which is a faster and cheaper alternative to a plow. So do yourself a favor, would you? You need a cedar and seeds. But who would have thought that, huh? Let's not forget yield improvement. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a weeder. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. Decide whether to invest in an expensive, self-propelled sugar beet harvester or a combination of a home topper and pulled harvester. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. That should be it. I could go for something sweet now. Give me step-by-step -step instructions. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is plowing. You need to plow if you have grown this crop on this particular field before. Because of the roots, you can use a subsoiler instead of a plow. It's faster. Step three is planting the crop. 
Attach the planter to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the implement, and turn it on. Now you plant the crop row after row. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. That'll earn you more income later. Step five is weeding using a hoe. Take care of your plants and get rid of weeds as soon as possible. Use a hoe or a herbicide sprayer. Use the latter only if the weeds are already too tall. Step six is harvesting. Once the sugar beets are fully grown, you must cut off the tops before harvesting. A self-propelled harvester does that in one step. Don't forget, if you use a home topper and a harvester as separate implements, your tractor would have to be strong enough to attach both at the same time, front and rear. Otherwise, you have to do the home topping and harvesting separately in two steps. So go ahead and farm some sugar beets. The pigs will be happy. They're hungry for sugar beet. Give me step-by-step -step instructions. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is plowing. You need to plow if you have grown this crop on this particular field before. Because of the roots, you can use a subsoiler instead of a plow. It's faster. Step three is planting the crop. Attach the planter to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the implement, and turn it on. Now you plant the crop row after row. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. That'll earn you more income later. Step five is weeding using a hoe. Take care of your plants and get rid of weeds as soon as possible. Use a hoe or a herbicide sprayer. Use the latter only if the weeds are already too tall. Step six is harvesting. Once the sugar beets are fully grown, you must cut off the tops before harvesting. A self-propelled harvester does that in one step. Don't forget, if you use a home topper and a harvester as separate implements, your tractor would have to be strong enough to attach both at the same time, front and rear. Otherwise, you have to do the home topping and harvesting separately in two steps. So go ahead and farm some sugar beets. The pigs will be happy. They're hungry for sugar beet. Can you tell me more about cotton? What equipment do I need for cotton? Special equipment, that's for sure. Cotton might not be the best choice for beginners, but it's definitely fun. You need a huge field. A full bale of cotton is produced by around two hectares of harvest. The smaller the fields, the less efficient your work. Get yourself a cultivator to prepare your field. If the field requires plowing, you need a plow or a subsoiler, which is a nice and faster alternative. Then you need a planter and seeds. A fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime are undoubtedly recommended for yield improvement. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you need a weeder. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. A cotton harvester is quite expensive, but here's the thing. You don't have to buy one. Just lease it for a short time. Anyway, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the bales from the harvester. Don't forget to empty your trailer once in a while. Give me step-by-step -step instructions. First, check the crop calendar and the appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting. Step one, start with cultivating your field. 
it's usually enough to cultivate instead of plowing. Get to the field, lower the cultivator into the ground, and go. Step two, apply lime if your field requires it. It increases the yield. Check if your fertilizer spreader that you need later can also apply lime. Step three, time to plant some cotton. Get your planter and sow the seeds row by row until the entire field is covered. Step four, apply fertilizer to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer or lime and apply it to the field. Repeat the process after your crop gets a little bigger to increase fertilization to 100% and get as much income from the harvest as possible. Step five, take care of your plants and get rid of weeds as soon as possible. Use your weeder before they grow past the first stage. If they grow further, you need a hoe or field sprayer, but those are more expensive. Step six, as soon as the cotton is fully grown, you need to hop in that expensive machine and start harvesting. You need a certain amount of cotton to unload a complete cotton bale. Tell me more about corn. What equipment do I need for corn? I'll help you to get corny, but you need the following machines. Get a cultivator to prepare your field. You don't need a plow to go deep unless the field really needs it. For example, if you've grown root crops before. If the field requires plowing, you need a plow or a subsoiler, which is a faster and cheaper alternative to a plow. You need a planter and seeds. Hard to plant without a planter, isn't it? You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime so you can increase the yield. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a hoe. It will remove weeds between crops growing in rows. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. Get yourself one of those nice combine harvesters, but make sure you have a header suitable for corn too. Also, keep in mind, leasing is an option. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. That's all you need. Nothing too corny on that list. Give me step-by-step -step instruction, please. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is cultivating. Get to the field, lower the cultivator into the ground, and go. It's usually enough to cultivate instead of plowing. Step three is planting the crop. Attach the planter to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the implement, and turn it on. Now you plant the crop row after row. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. That way, you will earn way more income when you harvest and sell the corn. Step five is weeding using a hoe. Take care of your plants get rid of weeds as soon as possible. Use a hoe or a herbicide sprayer. Use the latter only if the weeds are already too tall. Step six is harvesting. After the corn is matured and is ready to harvest, you need to attach the corn header to your combine harvester and start harvesting. Hopefully there are no weeds left, kid. And that's it. Go get corny on the field now. Can you tell me about sunflowers? What equipment do I need for sunflowers? Oh, you need a lot of shiny things for sunflowers, kid. Take note. Get a cultivator to prepare your field. You don't need a plow to go deep unless the field really needs it. For example, 
if you've grown root crops before. Here's a surprise. You need a seeder and seeds. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a weeder. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. Get yourself one of those nice combine harvesters, but make sure you have a suitable header for sunflowers to match it. Don't forget that leasing is an option. Keep an eye on the sunflower icon when shopping for headers. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. That's all you need to shine and bring in those bright sunflowers. Step-by-step -step instructions, please. Rise and shine. Time to farm some sunflowers. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is cultivating. Get to the field, lower the cultivator into the ground, and go. It's usually enough to cultivate instead of plowing. Step three is planting the crop. Attach the planter to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the implement, and turn it on. Now you plant the crop row after row. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step five is weeding using a mechanical weeder. Get rid of weeds when they appear on the field. If they grow further, you need a hoe or field sprayer, but try to avoid that. Step six is harvesting. Hop into your combine harvester, attach the appropriate header, and start harvesting. Do that by lowering the header and turning it on. When you are done, unload the harvest into a trailer by extending the pipe of the combine harvester. When it's positioned over a trailer, it unloads automatically. And that's it. You can use sunflowers to feed your pigs or make oil from the seeds at a production plant that offers to process it. If you want to get rid of it quickly, sell it at one of the selling stations in town. I think we'll skip the step-by-step -step on this one. Can you tell me more about sugarcane? What's so special about sugarcane? So let me give you the sweet talk. Sugarcane is quite unique and offers some sweet benefits. This crop grows back after the harvest. No need to plant again. And you don't need an initial plowing. You only need to plow once in a while to increase your yield. Don't be fooled by its high yield, however. The selling price is quite low. But since it's easy to grow and doesn't require much attention, you still might want to go for it. If you want to grow more on other fields, you can fill your planter with harvested sugarcane from a previous harvest. Sweet, huh? What equipment do I need for sugarcane? Oh, you want the sweet stuff. I can help you with the equipment. Also, as usual, have a plow ready or a subsoiler, which is a nice and faster alternative. You only need to plow once in a while when growing sugarcane, however. Not every time. You need a specialized planter and seedlings. Sugarcane seedlings are not contained in the usual big bag. They are sold on pallets. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you need a mechanical weeder or a hoe. Sugarcane grows very fast. Get rid of the weeds right away. If you wait too long, you'd have to use a sprayer and herbicide, which is more expensive. You need a cane harvester. Two choices, either a self-propelled harvester or, and this is the cheaper option, a harvester implement to attach to your tractor. 
you will also need a trailer that can be attached to the sugarcane harvester or your tractor. Sugarcane cannot be stored in the harvester. It does not have a tank. It must be unloaded into a trailer during harvest. That's all you need. It's your turn now. Give me step-by-step -step instructions, please. Sweet. Let's farm some sugarcane. But, as usual, check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is plowing, but only if the field requires it. With sugarcane, you only need to plow once in a while. So, if your field doesn't need plowing, skip this step. Step three is planting the crop. Get your specialized planter and sow the seedlings row after row until the entire field is covered. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step five is weeding, using either a mechanical weeder or a hoe. Be quick, sugarcane and weeds grow fast. If you don't do it right away, applying herbicide with a field sprayer is the final chance before it's too late. Step six is the harvest. When your sugarcane is fully grown, use your specialized sugarcane harvester or harvester attachment for your tractor. Remember, you need your trailer attached to your harvester, as sugarcane is not stored in the machine. It will end up on the ground without a trailer behind your harvester. And that's it. You can use sugarcane to produce sugar. If that's not sweet enough for you, process it further and make cakes or chocolate. Mmm, chocolate. By any chance, you don't have one with you, do you? No? Well, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Can you tell me about Poplar? What's so special about Poplar? So, a few things up front. Poplar grows back, and you don't need an initial plowing. You only need to plow once in a while to increase your yield. As poplar is a tree, you don't need to worry about weeds. Isn't that something? Another good thing about poplar, you can harvest trees at any time of the year. You can do it with a special harvester or a baler. You get wood chips when you harvest poplar, sell those or use them in productions. What equipment do I need for poplar? Sure, I can guide you so you don't bark up the wrong tree and buy the wrong equipment. You should get yourself a plow or a subsoiler, which is a nice and faster alternative. You only need to plow once in a while when growing poplar, however, not every time. You need a specialized planter and seedlings. Poplar is not contained in the usual big bag full of seeds. They are sold on pallets. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. To harvest poplar, you need a specialized harvester and an empty trailer. If you are using a baler to harvest, you need a trailer that can transport bales. Got it? Good. Go on then, kid. Give me step-by-step -step instructions. Poplar is not that complex, but first things first. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is plowing, but only if the field requires it. With poplar, you only need to plow once in a while. So, if your field doesn't need plowing, skip this step. Step three, plant the poplar. Get the appropriate planter and plant the seedlings row by row until the entire field is covered. 
Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. On to step five. When the poplar trees are fully grown, you can start harvesting. Just align your machine in the field and start harvesting, whether you use a baler or a harvester. Don't forget that you'll need a trailer for either the chips from the harvester or the bales from the baler. That's it. Sounds easy enough, doesn't it? Can you tell me more about carrots? What equipment do I need for carrots? You need special equipment for this vegetable. Keep that in mind. You need a budget to purchase those, or you lease them. Let me guide you to avoid unnecessary purchases. If the field requires plowing, you need a plow, or a subsoiler, which is a faster and cheaper alternative to a plow. You need a vegetable planter and seeds to sow this crop. This is optional, but using a ridge former to prepare the field before seeding will yield more crop. Skip it if you don't have the time or money. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a hoe. It will remove weeds between crops growing in rows. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. You need a specialized vegetable harvester. But this acquisition comes with a choice. Do you use a trailer to overload the harvest? Or do you use vegetable pallets? Keep in mind that you pay for each pallet and also need a trailer for pallets. That's it. Took some notes, kid? Give me step-by-step -step instructions, please. Ah, carrots. My favorite. Orange sticks you get from the soil. Here's what to do. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two might be optional. If you have grown carrots or other root crops, like potatoes, on that field just before, you need to plow. Step three, shape some ridges. Shape ridges before you sow. Doing that will result in higher yield. But this one is optional too. If you own a ridge former, do it. Step four is planting the carrots. Get your vegetable planter and sow carrots row after row until the entire field is covered. Step five, fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step six, take care of your plants and get rid of weeds as soon as possible. Use a hoe or a herbicide sprayer. Use the latter only if the weeds are already too tall. Step seven, are the carrots fully grown? Time to harvest then. Overload the harvest directly into a trailer or onto vegetable pallets. That's it. Enjoy some carrots. Can you tell me more about parsnips? What equipment do I need for parsnips? If the field requires plowing, you need a plow or a subsoiler, which is a faster and cheaper alternative to a plow. You need a vegetable planter and seeds to sow this crop. This is optional, but using a ridge former to prepare the field before seeding will yield more crop. Skip it if you don't have the time or money. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a hoe. It will remove weeds between crops growing in rows. 
Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. You need a specialized vegetable harvester. But this acquisition comes with a choice. Do you use a trailer to overload the harvest? Or do you use vegetable pallets? Keep in mind that you pay for each pallet and also need a trailer for pallets. That's it. My mother always made a soup with parsnips. Have you tried that? If not, maybe this is your chance. We'll skip step by step because it's going to pretty much be like carrots. Tell me more about red beets. What equipment do I need for red beets? So, you want to grow some red beet. Some call them beetroot, by the way. No matter how you call them, good choice. If the field requires plowing, you need a plow. Or a subsoiler, which is a faster and cheaper alternative to a plow. You need a vegetable planter and seeds to sow this crop. This is optional, but using a ridge former to prepare the field before seeding will yield more crop. Skip it if you don't have the time or money. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a hoe. It will remove weeds between crops growing in rows. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. You need a specialized vegetable harvester. But this acquisition comes with a choice. Do you use a trailer to overload the harvest? Or do you use vegetable pallets? Keep in mind that you pay for each pallet and also need a trailer for pallets. That's all you need for red beet. Can you tell me more about rice? What's the difference between rice and long grain rice? Here's the thing. Rice is not necessarily rice. There are two different types, long grain rice and what we just call rice around here. They need different water levels, machines to sow and harvest, and seeds, of course. Long grain rice isn't sown in water like other rice. The rice paddy for long grain rice gets flooded after the sowing, not before. What do I need for rice? Rice is planted in water of an already flooded rice paddy. That's a special type of field deepened to allow for water retention. That's why you need open space on your land first and foremost. You need a tractor, a cultivator, a special rice planter, a special harvester, and a trailer. Since the rice planter will take care of fertilization, you don't need an additional fertilizer spreader like with other crops. What do I need for long grain rice? First, you require a rice paddy. That's a field deepened for water retention. You better have some open space available on your land. You need a cultivator to prepare the ground and a seeder to sow long grain rice. Use a fertilizer spreader to improve the yield with fertilizer and lime. To harvest long grain rice, you need a harvester and a fitting header. You can use the same header that is used for grains. Finally, you need a trailer to transport and sell the harvested long grain rice. Explain rice step by step. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one to grow rice is placing rice paddies. That's a construction similar to grapevines and olive groves. You need to place and shape a paddy on your land. Step two is planting the rice. Here's the fun part. Before sowing, you need to fill your field with water. Keep it up to 60% full for plants to grow. To fill your paddy with water, simply interact with the water pump next to your rice field. Step three is planting the rice. By the way, you can grow your very own rice saplings in a specialized greenhouse. To keep it simple right now, you can just buy them. 
fill your planter with saplings and fertilizer. Yes, planting and fertilizing happens at the same time. Nice. Plant row after row. Step four is managing the water level. You need to maintain different water levels at different growth stages. You can raise or lower the water level. The pump will automatically provide the correct amount of water. Just check your water pump daily to maintain the proper level or you will lose seedlings and yield. On to step five. Once the plant is ready to harvest, just head over to your harvester and hop in. Drive to one corner of your paddy and start harvesting one row after another. When the tank of the harvester is full, drive it up to your trailer, facing it rearward since it unloads in the back. Press the button to start overloading until the trailer is full. Step six, profit. At least, if you sell it right away, you can decide to process it further at select production plants. Or store it until you get better prices from selling points. Prices fluctuate. But we're not done yet. To cultivate another batch of rice, apply lime to the field and cultivate the paddy with a cultivator. Lime is only required after a couple harvests. Check the field info if required. That's it. Enjoy some rice. Explain long grain rice step by step. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one for long grain rice is placing the rice patties. That's a construction similar to grapevines and olive groves. You need to place and shape a patty on your land. A new patty is already limed and cultivated, so you don't need to do this right now. Step two is sowing. With long grain rice, you don't need any water to sow your plant just yet. Just fill your cedar with seeds and start sowing one row after another until the whole patty is covered. Step three is fertilizing. Hook up your fertilizer spreader to your tractor and start spreading the fertilizer onto your rice paddy. Unlike other crops, long grain rice only needs to be fertilized once. Would be hard to do after the next step, anyway. Step four is to flood the field. After that, you need to maintain different water levels at different growth stages. Simply interact with the water pump. You can raise or lower the water level. Don't worry, the pump will only allow just the right amount of water. Just check your water pump daily to maintain the proper level. If you don't, you will lose some of your rice saplings. Step five is the harvest, but make sure you pump out remaining water first. Take the harvester, attach the header, and harvest row after row. To unload the harvester when the tank is full, drive it up to your trailer. When the pipe is positioned on top of the trailer, it will unload automatically until full. Step six is the preparation for the next cycle if you want to grow long grain rice again. Turn the field white by applying lime if required. Then cultivate. That'll mix the soil and the lime. Lime is only required after a couple harvests. Check the field info if it is required this time. Ready to grow some rice, kid? Can you tell me more about spinach? What's so special about spinach? Other than being the favorite meal of strong sailors and the exceptionally high content of iron is nothing but a myth? Well, it's still a power plant and very healthy, of course. Spinach is also interesting because it grows twice during a season. So once, harvest twice. How about that? Also, one other thing you need to keep in mind. Spinach needs to be kept fresh and sold quickly. You can't store it like other crops and need to sell it right away. What do I need for spinach? For starters, a tractor would be nice. You will need a cultivator to prepare the soil and a cedar to sow the spinach. Next, you should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime, so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. You can use a soil roller to compact the soil and further increase the yield, if you want. 
but you definitely need a weeder to get rid of weeds that will soon pop up. Otherwise, you can say bye-bye to a portion of your income. Spinach needs a special harvester, don't forget. And you need a trailer to transport and sell your harvested spinach right away. No time to store fresh spinach. Can I have step-by-step -step instruction? Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is cultivating. Get to the field, lower the cultivator into the ground, and go. It's usually enough to cultivate instead of plowing. Step three is sowing the crop. Attach the cedar to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the sower, and turn it on. Now you sow the grain, one row at a time. Keep in mind, if you plant spinach as soon as possible, you can harvest twice during this season. If you start too late, the second batch will wither during the cold months. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step five is soil rolling, condensing, and improving the soil. If you want to improve your yield even further, you should use a roller on your freshly planted seeds. This step is optional, however. Step six, get rid of weeds when they appear on the field. If they grow further, you need a hoe or field sprayer, but try to avoid that. Step seven is harvesting. Hop into your combine harvester, attach the appropriate header, and start harvesting. Do that by lowering the header and turning it on. When you are done, unload the harvest into a trailer by extending the pipe of the combine harvester. When it's positioned over a trailer, it unloads automatically. Step eight is to sell the spinach. Since the spinach must be processed as soon as possible, you cannot store it to sell later. Now, here's the thing. If you didn't waste any time, if you planted and harvested as soon as you could, the plants will now start growing again, and you can harvest a second time. Just wait until the spinach has matured again. If you are late, and it's getting too cold before the second harvest, well, be quicker next time, newbie. Can you tell me more about peas? What do I need for peas? Get a cultivator to prepare your field. You don't need a plow to go deep unless the field really needs it. For example, if you've grown root crops before, you need a cedar and seeds. You can use a soil roller to compact the soil and further increase the yield if you want. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a weeder. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. For this crop, a specialized harvester is required. Don't you try to just use your combine with a grain header, kid. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. Give me step-by-step -step instruction. Check the crop calendar and appropriate time frame for planting and harvesting before you start. Step one is liming. Lime needs to be worked into the ground and will improve the yield of your harvest. Step two is cultivating. Get to the field, lower the cultivator into the ground, and go. It's usually enough to cultivate instead of plowing. Step three is planting the crop. Attach the planter to your tractor and head over to the field. Select the crop you want to grow, position yourself at one corner of the field, lower the implement, 
and to turn it on. Now you plant the crop row after row. Step four is fertilizing to increase the yield. Fill a fertilizer spreader with fertilizer and apply it to the field. Repeat the process to increase fertilization to 100%. Step five is soil rolling, condensing, and improving the soil. If you want to improve your yield even further, you should use a roller on your freshly planted seeds. This step is optional, however. Step six, get rid of weeds when they appear on the field. If they grow further, you need a hoe or field sprayer, but try to avoid that. Step seven is harvesting. For this crop, a specialized harvester is required. Don't you try to just use your combine with a grain header, kid. When you are done, unload the harvest into a trailer by extending the pipe of the combine harvester. When it's positioned over a trailer, it unloads automatically. Find the best selling point with the highest bid, unload the trailer in the designated area, and enjoy a successful harvest. Can you tell me more about green beans? What do I need for green beans? Other than your tractor, you need a few things. Get a cultivator to prepare your field. You don't need a plow to go deep unless the field really needs it. For example, if you've grown root crops before. You need a planter and seeds. You should have a fertilizer spreader, fertilizer, and lime so you can increase the yield. Keep in mind, not every spreader might be able to apply lime. You can use a soil roller to compact the soil and further increase the yield, if you want. To get rid of the weeds that will soon pop up, you require a weeder. Otherwise, the yield will be reduced. For this crop, a specialized harvester is required. Don't you try to just use your combine with a grain header to bring in the beans, kid. Finally, you better have an empty trailer available to unload the crops from the harvester. It's not much that you need, but it is rather specialized equipment. Keep in mind, you can lease what you don't own. Any more questions?